When creating web apps, oftentimes a table isn't quite enough to communicate all of your data. In this video, we're going to learn how to make charts and graphs more accessible. You've probably seen lots of different charting solutions online. Some of them are great, some of them are not so great. For example, you can create some really amazing looking charts using browser plugins like Flash. The problem with charts like this is that they're typically not accessible to screen readers or refreshable braille displays. Additionally, they're not viewable on mobile phones usually, and they tend to perform poorly on older hardware. And they have all sorts of other issues that I'm not going to get into here. Another solution that people have tried is making charts using images. This is the Google Charts API, and it does just that, and it does a pretty good job of it. Again, however, we do run into some similar issues when using images. Unless there's really good markup to support the images or a long description attribute in the image tag, images aren't the optimal solution, although they are a bit more viable than Flash. So here I'm going to show you one example of how you can create accessible charts using, you guessed it, plain old HTML and CSS. Now, a lot of charting libraries will take this approach, but they often have implementations with varying degrees of accessibility. If you do choose to go with a pre-built charting solution instead of rolling your own charts, I highly recommend you investigate exactly how the charts are being generated. Now, on to the good stuff. This is the chart that we're going to be creating, and this is what it should look like when we're done. Our chart is going to be a simple horizontal bar graph, but you can use HTML and CSS to create lots of other different types of charts. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we just have a blank page, and I'm going to switch over to the text editor, and we're just going to go ahead and start creating some markup here. So first I'm going to create an unordered list, and we're going to give this the class graph, and this is going to be our primary element here. And then I'm going to just create a list item and go ahead and close it there. And first, inside my list item, I'm going to go ahead and create an anchor tag. And this isn't going to lead anywhere, but you could imagine it might lead towards some additional information about the data. And I'm going to say oranges here. And right below that, I'm going to create a span tag with the class total, and we'll talk more about that in just a second, and I'm going to close that, and inside of that I'm going to put 120, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste, and create a few more list items here, and I'm going to differentiate these just a bit, these are going to be strawberries, and the total here will be 80, these are going to be apples, and the total here will be 60, and these are going to be bananas, and the total for that will be 40. And to finish this off, I'm going to go ahead and just add a header here, fruit farms in Florida. So this will be a graph just charting how many different types of fruit farms are on Florida. Of course, this data is all made up, but you get the idea. So when we switch back to the browser and refresh, we now have our header there and we have our nice list of fruits or fruit farms and the various distributions there. So this will comprise most of the data that's going to be in our chart. This markup alone though isn't quite enough because we need some kind of data in the HTML to tell the browser how wide our bars should ultimately be. So let's go ahead and add some additional markup here. Right before these span tags, I'm going to go ahead and create another span with the class percentage. And I'm going to give a style attribute on this one. And I'll give it a width of 40% because 120 is going to be 40% of our total here. And in parentheses, inside of the span tag, I'm just going to put 40% and close that off. Now I'm just going to go ahead and once again copy and paste these so that we can move along quickly here. So this one is 27%. This one 
is 20%. And finally, bananas comprise 13%. And if we switch back to the browser and refresh, there we go, we now have our percentages. Now, most users will never actually see these percentages in text form. The width percentages in the style attributes will drive the bar charts. The percentages inside of the span tags, however, will be picked up by screen readers. Now that we have our markup, we're ready to move on to the styling. In the next video, we'll do just that. Thank you.